Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Good afternoon. We are going to bring you more late breaking news. This is coming from the west side of the city where there was a call for an active or rather a shooting uh, involving a police officer. Yeah, this is on the uh, pin road just north of Highway 90. Uh, we have limited information right now, but we do have a crew on the way right now. Uh, Tiffany Huertas is on the way as well as our photojournalists. Uh, but this is the second time, the second day in a row that uh, San Antonio police here in the area have been involved in in a shooting right now uh, there are officers all around the scene but we're being told that the situation is somewhat under control uh, they're not searching for a suspect or anything like that uh, the situation is contained now this is right off of highway 90 and we're being told that highway 90 is shut down right now while this investigation is underway this is at 2342 pin road uh, at westfield and this is on the west side of the city a uh, lot of unconfirmed reports of, uh, of an officer injured and, and shots fired and potential injuries. We are trying to confirm all of that for you. We have multiple crews that are en route to the area. We're also being told that um, this is near Westwood Terrace Elementary, but Northside ISD will not be shutting down any schools because, again, this situation is under control, and as soon as we get information, we'll bring it to you. And, Ursula, I know a lot of... Um People that live in that area have been calling our newsroom. We're trying to get as much information as we can. Absolutely. And and just to give you an idea, this is just a couple of miles away from St. Mary's University. Um, and uh, this is, you know, the we're getting reports that their EMS has been called to the scene. Again, we don't know the number of injuries. We don't know specifically what happened here, uh, but we are monitoring uh, information that's coming in over police radios as well as uh, again crews on the scene uh, to bring us live shoot uh, live shot from that location and this is what um, san antonio police is saying right now we know that uh, again you said 2410 uh, 2400 block of uh, pin road the latest uh, what they're calling an officer um, sh involved shooting an officer that was involved in a shooting we don't know if he was shot or if he was the one that opened fire the preliminary information will be provided to the media in that area. All right, we'll bring it to you as soon as we get it. Meantime, we will move on to an update on yesterday's shooting situation. Travelers taking to the skies despite what happened on the ground at the San Antonio International Airport yesterday afternoon. Yes, San Antonio police have not yet released the name of the man who fired shots outside one of the terminals. He was then shot and killed by a park police officer. Katrina Weber tells us even with remnants of that shooting nearby, travelers are still trying to get back to business as usual. It looks like any normal busy morning at San Antonio's airport. But when you take a closer look, you see the after effects of a crazy afternoon. Doors with shattered glass and a window that took a bullet. In San Antonio, you see it everywhere else, but not in San Antonio. The world nowadays is just getting terrible. Claudia Buckman, like a lot of people, showed up at the airport trying to forget what happened. Police Chief William McManus says a 46-year-old man known to have mental illness drove the wrong way outside the lower level terminal around 2.30 yesterday afternoon. He says he jumped out of his car and started shooting. A park police officer then pulled out his gun, shooting and killing the man. No one else was hit. It's getting crazier in Texas. Jatavius Kelly on his way to Los Angeles was a bit shaken to hear the news. A little bit. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know I didn't know that happened until you told me. Sometimes you just gotta go business as usual. Portland-bound Karen Hottie made up her mind to leave behind the baggage of worrying about it. But it may be easier said than done. This bullet hole is a sign of the fear that many people felt. But what is odd is that this has become an unofficial selfie spot. A lot of people have been stopping by to take pictures. They're making memories at a site that some people would rather forget. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. As promised, we want to bring you some more information. Again, this is an unfolding situation. Minute by minute, we're getting more information about a, a, a shooting that occurred with a police officer over on the west side of town on Pin Road. Uh, we're just receiving some information from Northside ISD now. Yeah, four different schools, um, if you can correct me, Me Meadow? Villa Schools, Mal Meadow Village, Village, Westwood Terrace, Jones uh, Elementary, 
and Cable Elementary. Those four schools are on a modified lockdown. That means this, this is not a complete lockdown. Uh, it means that all the exterior doors are locked, no outdoor activities, but classes inside the building are going to continue without disruption. Again, Northside is not locking down schools, even though there was a shooting incident in that district. Uh, because there is no search for a suspect. The situation is contained. We, again, are going to keep on monitoring this. We'll be bringing you the information throughout this news hour. Meantime, city and union, uh, police union, are back at the negotiating table today. Two sides trying to hammer out a new five-year contract for officers on the table today. How much cops should kick in for their own health care and also expected to take up the most high profile and stickiest issue of the negotiations changes to the appeals process for fired officers. We have updates on any progress coming up this evening. Also happening today, the Alamo Trust unveiling a new cannon this morning. That cannon part of a new exhibit that'll give visitors a different perspective of how large the Alamo compound was and the importance of this particular cannon replica. Yeah, the 18-pounder Losoya House exhibit was unveiled with the help of local and state government leaders, including Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and General Land Commissioner George P. Bush. Alicia Barrera is live from the Alamo Plaza with a closer look at the exhibit. What are you seeing, Alicia? Good morning. Well, we saw a really big crowd. They were really excited. And this is what we've been waiting to see. I was actually asked if this was what I expected, either bigger or larger, definitely bigger than what I imagined. I'm here with Colby. He's the historical researcher at the Alamo. So how exactly was it that y'all were able to replicate this? We uh, we started off with a lot of historical research, going through uh, archives, uh, books, and then uh, written record. Um, and then we went out to San Pedro Springs Park, where the original gun would have um, been placed in the, um, the early 1900s and we found a stone plinth there, measured that plinth out and then we used that to get a basic reference for some of the photographic evidence we had of the old cannon, the original. And from that we were able to replicate this, this uh, cannon. So I actually want to show y'all one of those pictures and this is actually giving you an idea. Um, historical researchers believe that this is the first time that anyone has been able to stand at this level. So take this picture, 1835, that's the cannon that was replicated. This is the Alamo. So in this corner here is where we're standing. Colby. This is the first time that anyone can actually get this view. How special is that for visitors who are going to come along now? I think it's so exciting for visitors. Visitors can actually get up here and get a good vantage point of what the Alamo defenders would have seen. Specifically, William Bear Travis and James Bowie would have been standing in this location at approximately this height next to a cannon of this size. I mean, it's the closest you're going to get to 1836, which is so exciting for us. Colby, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and all the insight. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys for coming out. So this is going to be open for the public from now on. It's free and it's going to be operating during nor normal Alamo hours. So that's 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Reporting live from the Alamo, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Now to the pandemic. Local health officials report 76 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and four more deaths. The seven day rolling average is now at 224 cases per day. Meanwhile, more than 700,000 people have received at least one of the COVID-19 vaccines. More than 400,000 people are fully vaccinated in San Antonio. And the number of new coronavirus infections, though, across the country trending in the wrong direction. In just the past month, the U.S. has seen a 30 percent increase in new cases. This comes as Pfizer, uh, those who got the Pfizer vaccine, might need to get a booster shot, according to the CDC. They're releasing new data on vaccines showing of the more than 66 million Americans fully vaccinated, only 5,800 people out of that were infected with the coronavirus after the shots. That's significantly less than 1% infection rate. Meantime, Michigan battling its third wave. We are in our third surge, uh, which is just like a runaway train right now. It's just no more room. ICUs are filling up. Unfortunately, ventilators are being taken up as well. Okay, we get the number of new coronavirus infections again, uh, going in the wrong direction, but Michigan is probably has the most 
uh, reported uh, cases. They have a 90% capacity right now. That's where they are in Michigan. At least 24 hospitals in Michigan are reporting they're at 90% capacity. The seven day average for the US meantime is hovering at 67,000 new infections. Appointments for the COVID-19 vaccine are now available at Gonzaga Medical Group for people 18 and older. The Moderna vaccine will be administered between 8 a.m. and 9 and 4 p.m. from Tuesday, April 20th to Friday, April 23rd at the Gonzaga Event Center at 933 Pleasanton Road. Appointments are required to get the vaccine. To schedule, call 210-905-4276. Phone lines are open until 8 p.m. Fog clouds this morning. We'll see a cold front this afternoon and this evening. That could bring some showers and storms with it. We've got the latest forecast coming up. Local basketball star Kiana Williams was drafted by the Seattle Storms last night. Larry will have more later in sports. Welcome back. You're now looking live at the scene on Pin Road. We've been telling you about a shooting incident that occurred on the west side of town in the 2300 block of Pin Road. Look at that police presence right now. Heavy police presence. We know that the uh, police chief, William McManus, just arrived on the scene. But you're looking at what we now understand does involve a police officer that was involved in a shooting. We're still trying to get information as to the details. We're hoping that uh, the chief will get on. Uh, uh, here quickly and give us a briefing as to what really happened there. That's right. We had a report of shots fired at this location, uh, unconfirmed reports of injury. EMS was called out there and we did hear uh, scanner traffic involving transportation to hospitals. But again, none of this has been um, confirmed. We're waiting for the chief to give us the details. Meantime, uh, there is a modified lockdown at four schools in that area of around Penn Road and Westfield, which is right off of Highway 90 near St. Mary's University. Uh, the scene, some of the businesses around that scene is there's a pin road in right around there, a Vicky's Mexican restaurant, just to give you an idea of the, the location, a very uh, dense shopping area. It looks as though there are a lot of businesses in the area. And you can see there are dozens and dozens of police units on the scene at this shooting. And you can see right there, obviously the road is closed because of this police presence. So if you're traveling to that area, just be aware that this is what the situation is. Uh, pro likely earlier, just a few minutes ago, they said uh, the frontage road off of Highway 90 was, was closed. So you're gonna have some trouble getting around in that area. But as you can see, there is. it looks like the, um, the ambulance is getting ready to leave, an ambulance that was uh, stationed there. Right, that fire truck is moving out. Uh, Again, still an active scene, but we were listening to the scanner traffic and trying to understand if there was any threat to the public. And uh, they are have no suspect search underway. And that is why there is only a modified lockdown at the schools in the surrounding area. But that entire uh, three block area, it looks like, is shut down right now to traffic. Uh, you can see another EMS unit pulling out of the area. And we are waiting for Chief uh, William McManus, who just arrived on the scene just a couple of minutes ago uh, to get briefed and then hopefully brief the media, which is now standing by at a staging area. Again, shots fired. It did involve a police officer. We're hearing that there were some injuries, um, but we're waiting to see if anything more significant happened here. It appears as though uh, something more significant is underway uh, just by merely the presence of all that police activity. Again, we have a crew on the way. Tiffany Huertas will hopefully give us a briefing soon. All right. Meantime, hard to even look outside right now. Uh, we would have a helicopter up over the scene of that shooting, but this is our scene from the air. It is. We finally got some rain. Really murky. Yeah, we did get a little bit low ceilings, guys. So that's that's part of the problem. But a little bit of rain. It did add up. We were able to measure it four hundredths of an inch. Uh, so there is a little bit. We're hoping for some more with the frontal boundary later this evening. The aquifer is still going down. It's down seven tenths of a foot to six forty eight point two. And look at your pollen count because it's been sort of damp. Mold jumped up. Oak has gone down. That's good news. It's a moderate category one forty. We'll talk about this frontal boundary. Some rain chances tomorrow too. That's coming up. 
Welcome back. We're looking outside right now. We've got cloudy skies, still some fog hanging around. It's been a problem most of the morning. It's been rather damp. Some of that drizzle is starting to go away, but these clouds still hanging low. We could see some clearing this afternoon, although I'm getting more and more skeptical of that. Still cloudy through much of the area. This evening, front brings a thin line of showers and storms. We're not going to get much rain out of this, but we are going to watch for a couple of storms to develop or maybe even a few showers right along that front as it moves through. And then tomorrow, windy. Watch those trash cans. They'll be blowing around. Gusts to 35 miles per hour cooler. We could see some showers through the day on your Saturday. Here's a look at the visibility improving somewhat here across Spare County, but we still have some of those low ceilings as we talked about. And there still is some fog in places like Kennedy over towards Gonzales. Most of the fog out west starting to lift. Things looking a little bit better there. There's the satellite picture, and you can see how thick the clouds are. The only clearing we have so far is far northern Edwards County, and maybe parts of Alverde County, but it will take some time for these clouds to erode. And as long as they're as thick as they are, temperatures are not going to warm up all that much. We really anticipated numbers up around 80. I think that's going to be hard to achieve at this point. And as we look at the forecast, a couple of showers. This model does show some clearing out west, and then here comes our front. As it moves through, and this is around 8 o'clock or so, does show a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm. There could be a strong thunderstorm, although the likelihood of that is, I think, low end, but we'll watch for it, and then uh, it'll quickly move through. Any rain chances, I think, is going to be pretty quick with the front. Now, as we get into tomorrow, behind the front, disturbance works through. This model shows quite a bit of rain coming in. Showers and maybe a few rumbles of thunder still on your Saturday. So be aware there will be some rain around tomorrow. If you have uh, plans to go out to kids soccer match or anything like that, know it's going to be a little bit damp and it will be chilly and it will be windy. So uh, tomorrow, probably not the nicest of days. Temperatures right now 67 at the airport, 68 in New Braunfels, 71 Pleasanton. You're getting into the 70s out west. Here's the forecast, the forecast highs. And again, I think these numbers are probably a little bit high at this point. We may go just 70s here in San Antonio, and I don't think we're going to get into the 80s out west. Or if we do, low 80s is what we'll be looking at. Tomorrow, behind the front, look at these sites. This is 5 o'clock tomorrow, and we're seeing temperatures in the mid-60s there. It is going to be a cool day, cool and, again, somewhat wet on your Saturday. Then we have the winds to contend with. Not much wind today, but we'll see gusts up around 35 as we get into tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow. So be ready for those gusty winds. Uh, 48 to start your Sunday, 67 for high on Sunday, mostly cloudy, still fairly cool. Very slight chance of some showers on Monday, and then temperatures will moderate as we get into next week. We'll be right back. With the 18th selection of the 2021 WNBA Draft, the defending champion Seattle Storm have selected Kiana Williams, guard from Stanford. Sitting up there, you know, getting nervous. I'm like, did they forget about me? But um, it's God's timing. Surrounded by family and friends, Kiana Williams is now a member of the Seattle Storm. Big hugs for her mom and dad and big board sports. Slowly slipping in the Western Conference, the Spurs are home tonight for a quick one-game homestand with the Portland Trailblazers. The Spurs are 3-7 in their last 10 games after losing to Toronto Wednesday night, 117-112. They start the 10th in the West. Now, usually this is time of the season when a pop can give some of the older guys rest, like veterans DeMar DeRozan, but that hasn't been the case yet. So how's DeMar feeling as the grind continues? I'm fine, um, physically. I'll be on top of, you know, everything I need to do to be able to recover, be ready for the games. That's my ability. Um, you know, you have the moments where, you know, the mental, mental fatigue can kick in here and there. Um, but, you know, you got to get through it. Um, can't make no excuses. It's a job at the end of the day. You know, um, just because you got a headache tonight don't mean you, you ain't got to write something tonight. 
Spurs will host the Blazers tonight, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Now, last night in the WNBA draft, Wagner High School great Keanu Williams was drafted 18th overall as the sixth pick in the second round by the defending WNBA champion Seattle Storm. Kiana held her draft party at the South Chicken and Waffles in Selma. She will soon join the Storm and head coach Dan Hughes because their season starts May 14th. Kiana had to wait longer than expected last night, but the fit is right. Yesterday was a huge day for the NCAA champion. Here's part of our interview with her last night. I was just so excited to finally hear my name called. Um, but but yeah, um, like I said, Seattle was one of the you know the um, the pro uh, teams that I thought would be a, a great fit for me. Um, it, I wasn't worried about you know what number I kept dropping, kept dropping. I wasn't worried about what number. I just wanted to go to the right situation. So to win the national championship here in town, and then the draft held virtually, so you get to hear your name called here in town, that's got to make being here just even more special, those two big events. Absolutely. To, to have this uh, moment in front of family and friends, uh, it means a lot. You know, the, the draft is usually in New York, and I know a lot of my family members probably wouldn't have been able to go. So to, to not only have the tournament here, but to have this moment, you know, me stepping into my next chapter in my home city where it all started, um, there's, there's, a, there's no better feeling. And then on top of that, you were honored by the city this morning, so it makes your day even better. Tell me what happened this morning. Yes, uh, Mayor invited me down, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, we went to City Hall, and he uh, presented me with, you know, just a San Antonio recognition uh, just for, you know, winning a national championship here in our hometown. So shout out to Mayor and uh, all the council members for, for having me this morning. You know, and I want to give a shout out to Kiana and her family for allowing the media to be there yesterday. It was a very special moment for us. It looks so exciting. She was so, so excited. We're definitely going to keep an eye on her. Absolutely. So talented and so beautiful. Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> that dress was amazing. Yes. Australia's drug regulator has linked its first death to the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. What officials say the victim died of still ahead. And again, we are covering this live, a shooting incident that occurred here on the west side of town in the 2300 block of Pin Road near Westfield. Um, we are seeing a, a lot less activity here. Um, we are getting reports of um, schools being on modified lockdown. We're still waiting to hear from the police chief. We understand that there are injuries and we are waiting to bring you exactly what happened here again an active situation at 2300 Pin Road and Westfield. And uh, we'll bring you the latest, hopefully in the next half hour. Welcome back. We are still monitoring the situation and we wanna tell you what we are seeing here in this live shot. We've got uh, photographers on the scene who say that there is a Ford truck there with shell casings all around it and that there is a police safe unit uh, parked next to that. We do not know exactly what occurred here, but it, it looks like there might have been a traffic stop and then there was a shooting that occurred after the traffic stop. Um, and again, San Antonio police are calling this an officer involved um, situation. We don't know if the officer was the one that was hurt or if it's the officer that opened fire simply um, put, but we do know that there are injuries. Yes, we have had EMS, multiple EMS units on the scene. Most of them are gone. It appears the situation is contained. Uh, reporters on the scene are telling us that uh, it appears that there are severe injuries here. We will bring you the very latest. We just don't want to jump uh, in and say something that the police cannot confirm with us. So we're going to hold back for a minute and wait for the police chief to tell us exactly what happened here. In the meantime, the situation still ongoing. The 2300 block of Pin Road at Westfield is still shut down. You can see there is no traffic going through here, an active investigation underway. But we're also being told that there is no suspect search underway, meaning the situation is contained. And Ursula, just to add to that, we know that the police chief is on the scene, so we hope to get some kind of information here in just a, a little bit. Yes, but we'll move on to some other news. Unfortunately, not uh, very positive news. A fatal police shooting of a 13 year old boy in Chicago. Protests have been erupting after the body camera video was released of this incident. And we do want to warn you, the footage is difficult to watch. ABC's Rena Roy gives us a closer look at what happened. Newly released body camera footage shows the moment's 13-year-old Adam Toledo was shot dead by Chicago police officer Eric Stillman. It all started when police got a call for shots fired just after 2 a.m. late last month. Chicago emergency, Travis. 
Hi, um, I just heard gunshots. But how many shots did you hear? A lot of more than five. Officers arriving at the location spotting Toledo and 21-year-old Ruben Roman, who took off running. Roman was knocked to the ground, Stillman chasing Toledo down an alleyway and firing a single shot. Chicago police releasing images allegedly showing Toledo with a gun behind his back. Then police say he appears to toss it behind a fence before putting his hands up. Video shows Stillman shot him less than one second later. The officer immediately tries rendering aid, but Toledo is unresponsive and bleeding from his chest. Adam turned around, had his hands up in the air, surrendered to the officer. Protesters taking to the streets in outrage, calling for police reform. I want to say to the mama, I'm here with in solidarity. Simply put, we failed Adam. In a statement, Silman's attorney defending his actions, saying in part he was faced with a life-threatening and deadly force situation, adding the gun was being orientated in his direction and he was left with no other option. Officer Stillman has been placed on administrative duties while under investigation by Chicago's Civilian Office of Police Accountability. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And yet another deadly shooting, this one a mass shooting in Indianapolis. A gunman opening fire at a massive FedEx warehouse. At least eight people were killed and many others wounded. And police say the shooter took his own life. And as ABC's Andrew Dimbert explains, the White House says President Joe Biden is being briefed on this latest mass shooting in the country. Another mass shooting in America overnight. Caller heard 10 shots from near the front of the entrance. Authorities say eight people were shot and killed and several others injured at a FedEx ground warehouse in Indianapolis near the airport. Just before 11 p.m. last night, police racing to the scene after reports of shots fired. There's a suspect description, shooter short white male wearing a hat, has a machine gun currently in front of the building. The suspect took his life very shortly before officers actually entered the facility. When authorities arrived, they found multiple victims inside and outside the shipping center. Around 100 workers were on duty at the time. Officials say the massacre was over in just minutes. An internal briefing from the Department of Homeland Security says it's the second largest FedEx Express hub in the world. We heard three more shots, and then my buddy Levi saw someone running out of the building, and then more shots went off. This morning, President Joe Biden briefed on the situation. This latest tragedy comes less than a month since 10 people were gunned down at a grocery store in Colorado and eight people were killed at several Asian spas in the Atlanta area. It also comes just a week after President Biden took aim at gun control through executive power to address the plague of gun violence tearing through American cities. And police say the gunman died by suicide. Law enforcement officials tell ABC News there is no indication that this was a terror attack. Meanwhile, while investigators are combing through evidence to figure out if this was an act of workplace violence, but so far a motive has not yet been determined. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. And the U.S. saw a significant drop in mass shootings in 2020 because of the pandemic, but this year we've already seen several deadly ones. The Gun Violence Archive says 147 mass shootings happen so far in 2021. Their definition of a mass shooting is a minimum of four gunshot victims. Turning now to the coronavirus pandemic, Australia's drug regulator is linking the recent death of a 48-year-old woman to the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. According to an official announcement, the woman died of thrombosis four days after getting the shot. The announcement says the woman suffered from a low platelet count. Officials say she is the third person to get a blood clot after receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine. Taking a live look outside right now, 67 degrees, and this is what it's looked like all day so far. It's it's almost looks like nighttime out there. <laughs> very murky, very murky. A lot, a lot of low clouds, fog. We've had drizzle. Uh, that drizzle's starting to lift a little bit. We're starting to see the fog go away soon, but the clouds are still there for sure. We're also tracking a cold front this afternoon. Should be here by this evening. As it does, it may generate a few showers, maybe a couple of storms. Let's look at the, the satellite and radar here, and you can kind of pick out where that front is, slowly making its way into our area. It's going to bring some gusty winds. It will also bring some cooler weather for the weekend. So a lot at play here, but right now, cloudy skies still in San Antonio and uh, not much in the way of rain, at least at the moment. 64 Bernie State, 67 Bandera, 69 
and New Braunfels 70 down there in Castroville. We'll see temperatures warm up into the 70s today. It will be warmer than yesterday, especially out west where we could get some breaks in the clouds and temperatures may jump into the 80s a little bit later this afternoon. Here's the weekend forecast. If you've got plans, know that tomorrow will be windy. There will be a chance for some showers and storms behind this cold front and we'll see mostly cloudy skies. 67 on Sunday. While there is an outside chance of a shower, I think Sunday's generally dry. 67, your high temperature, but we start off at 48. So a chilly weekend all the way around. And uh, we will get some warmer temperatures as we get into next week. We're going to have much more on that forecast in your seven-day forecast here in just a bit. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're continuing to follow this situation. Uh, we still see a lot of police activity here in the 2300 block of Pin Road at Westfield. Again, we're still waiting for the police chief, William McManus, who is on the scene to give us an update on what's going on. Meantime, we do have an update on the school situation there. Yeah, uh, NISD is saying right now that only Cable Elementary School right now remains in a modified lo lockdown. And this is just as a precaution because it's pretty close to where this scene is. Uh, there is no threat to the public is what we're hearing. Um, police investigating. Uh, there's a Ford truck parked there. There is uh, a safe unit parked there that appears to have shell casings around it. And uh, we know that EMS was called and that there are injuries here, but we cannot confirm uh, whether there was any kind of a fatality here. You can see the police officers are all around that Ford truck, that dark Ford truck you see right in the middle of your screen right now. So as we continue to wait uh, to get confirmation on the information that we heard over the scanners, we're going to go on to weather. All right, thank you guys. Let's go outside. Uh, cloudy skies still and temperatures in the 60s. We'll climb into the 70s this afternoon, so it does warm up more than yesterday, but this murky situation is going to hang around at least for another couple of hours, maybe some clearing out west. The low this morning, 64, so not much variation in the temperatures. Averages are 81 and 58. We'll actually be below average today, and the records are 95 and 35. Just a little bit of rainfall. We're hoping for some more. Maybe tomorrow, your forecast is coming up. Welcome back. It is 1245. Beautiful Friday because we didn't need the rain. Yeah. All that mm -hmm. yucky stuff that was and stuck. It was, yeah. It's slowly. Instead of just teasing us with drizzles today, we actually had something <laughs> that you could measure. A little bit. <laughs> you know, it's like 800 of an inch, but at this point we'll take what we can get, right? Uh, any little bit helps. We've been watching the aquifer pretty closely uh, because it's been dropping. It's down below 650 as we mentioned yesterday. And the 10 day average is still above 650. So we're not in stage two restrictions yet for SAWS customers, but we're getting close. Uh, if you want more information on stage two and what that means for you, uh, if we get there and it looks like we may, uh, we have some information on the website, ksat.com. Uh, you can check it out there. Otherwise, right now we've got uh, cloudy skies, 68 degrees. The drizzle for the most part has stopped. Easterly winds at about five miles per hour. Still a little bit of fog though. Places like Bernie State seeing reduced visibility. Airports starting to come down again. It's been fluctuating two and a half miles there. Hondo two and a half miles and some patchy fog elsewhere. We're watching a cold front, which right now is starting to move into parts of the hill country. You'll notice right along the front there are some showers. I think as it moves through later this evening, around dinner time, maybe a little bit later, we could see some showers, maybe a thunderstorm with this. It's going to bring gusty winds, cool us down some. In the meantime, we've just got cloudy skies. And there is some clearing trying to take place out west. Doesn't look like we're going to see a whole lot today. So that's going to have a bearing on temperatures, probably only 70s for highs this afternoon. Uh, the future cast shows that, that we could see a few showers, although that's not really showing up at the moment. So I don't know that, that we're going to see as much as what this computer model is showing. But as we get towards 5 o'clock, it does generate a few showers right along the front. And I think that's possible. Slides through, cooler, windy tomorrow. Again, this model wants to generate quite a bit of rain tomorrow. Not as widespread, I think, as what you're seeing here. But showers and a couple thunderstorms will be possible Saturday morning. They're about midday and then probably tapering off a little bit in the afternoon. So heads up there, windy, cooler and somewhat wet tomorrow on your Saturday. Temperatures right now, 68 degrees at the airport, 71 Pleasanton, 76 in Catula, 74 right now in Del Rio. And we're expecting highs right around 78 have lowered them some. And I think we'll see temperatures in the 80s out west where that clearing does occur before the front gets there. But once the front moves through, notice high temperatures tomorrow 
only in the mid 60s. So a huge change in the wind forecast. We could see gusts to 35 miles per hour. Bottom line, it's windy most of the day tomorrow with those gusts 30 to 35. It's going to blow things around and looking at the extended forecast. We'll go 65 tomorrow windy as we mentioned 40 percent chance of rain, especially early in the day. There could be some downpours 48 Sunday morning. Gets pretty chilly, 67 on your Sunday, mostly cloudy. Slight chance for showers and disturbance works through on Monday, 71. And we rebound into the upper 70s by Tuesday. Another little front moves through Tuesday into Wednesday. That cools us down some uh, as we get into the middle part of the week. But after this weekend, we're not really looking at much in the way of rain chances. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for tomorrow. But if you have plans tomorrow morning, have the umbrella, have the coat with you. Uh, because we will see some changes courtesy of that front. We'll be right back.